Hey there, Joe Fever at the Wind River Outdoor Company here in Lander, Wyoming. I'm the local fly fishing manager. Today I'm going to show you a version of the root beer midge. Uh, that's worked pretty good for me around here. Tie it a little different and tie it with a chartreuse rib, which seems to help it indicate a variety of things, not just midge, but maybe some um, caddis as well. I like to tie it with a copper bead. I like to tie it with a black nickel bead. I think they both work really well and kind of transition from the body colors right into the, the uh, bead there. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using the Fulling Mill FM 1167 heavyweight grub black nickel in a size 12. Uh, normally we'd fish this just a little bit smaller than that. Uh, even the caddis will probably be in the 16, 18s, something like that. Um, I'm going to be tying it with Vivas holographic tinsel in root beer, medium, and then also in a chartreuse ultra wire small as my rib, although you can go up to brassy if you want a, a bigger chartreuse flash. I'm going to be tying it with the Unithread 8 aught Olive Done. Um, so we're going to start our thread right behind the bead. And we're going to move it just a little bit back here. And then we're going to wrap back over our wraps to make sure we're nice and secure in there. I'm going to come in, clip that thread. And then I'm going to come in with my wire. secure it right behind the bead there. Normally I'll tie it at a 50 degree angle and then pull it in and adjust it. But it wasn't so easy there, I didn't get a chance to demonstrate that. So we're gonna go ahead and run this back. I'm gonna run this uh, back to about where the point of the barb would be. Um, and then stop there and then run it back up. Uh, tight touching turns would be nice, but this is pretty fine uh, thread for our purposes. So it's not gonna bulk up too much. Run it back up. And about this midpoint here, I'm going to come in with this holographic tinsel. And I'm going to hold it at a 90 to the hook, which is allow us to, going to allow us to capture it easily with the thread. And then once we've got a turn or two in there, I'm going to go ahead and pull it into place and secure it. And then we're going to go ahead and run this thread back to where we stopped our wire. And you know that holographic tinsel is not too wide, but if you're having trouble seeing past it, it's going to pull it up and look how much further you gotta go. How much further you gotta go. We're gonna stop right there. And then we're gonna take our thread, and if we've got the ability to even out any bumps or anything like that on our way back up to our place where we want to be hanging out behind the bead, we can do that on our way up. But we're fairly uniform. Uh, it's not going to matter too much. We're going to put a coating of UV for durability over the top of this. That's just going to help the whole thing. If you have a rotary function, you can make a little pile of thread here and then go the direction of your thread with your rotary as you uh, apply your tinsel. But just to help our friends who are non-rotary, we're going to go ahead and wrap it by hand. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull these tight so that it really cinches down. And I might get to the point where it distends or, or uh, I just, it stretches a little bit. And that's fine too. And up behind the boot. I'm gonna go ahead and tie her off one around and then two behind, one around, two behind. Now, uh, a really good fly tire around here, George Hunker, would tell you to stop your materials on the top of the hook because if you stop them on the bottom, they'll be down here where your thread is and you don't want to cut that at all. So for ease of access, another thing we can do with some of this holographic tinsel is just reach in here and snip the corner of it. And when we snip the corner of it, it'll create a little place where we can just pull it off like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't grab that little tag end of the hollow tinsel and wrap it down with a thread, which we achieved. And like I said before, you can make a little pile of thread or pull out a bunch of thread if you're going to wrap in the direction that's going to put more thread on your, on your hook right there. Uh, but for our friends who are non-rotary, we're just going to go ahead and do it by hand and start counter wrapping this wire. And I want to go ahead and give this enough space so that this is majority hollow tinsel, but with just that hint of green there. And as we get closer up towards the top, we can space those out a little bit more if we want, but it's not insanely uh, important. 
And once we get it behind the bead, we're gonna go ahead and do one over, two behind, one over, two behind, one over, two behind. And you'll notice I've got a little play in my bead here. And you could uh, wrap additional wire and pack it in there, add a little bit of weight if you wanted to, uh, but I'm not too concerned about it, like I said, because of the, um, because of the UV resin that we're gonna use. So I've gone ahead and put some wraps in there. I'm gonna go ahead and shore my bob bobbin right up to the bead uh, to make sure I'm applying some thread pressure to those wraps. And then I'm gonna helicopter my wire off. Now, you could be done at this step right here. We're gonna whip finish. One, two, three, four. Stop. Put another one in there. One, two, three, four. And those whip finishes are actually snugging our bead up there but we're gonna go a step further. So one of the things I'm gonna do to just add just a little bit of razzle dazzle to this fly is I'm gonna come in with some red. And I think I like red for this fly more than I like say a hot orange, because it's just a little more subtle and when we apply our UV resin it's gonna, it's gonna meld with these colors here. So now I've got my little hot collar red on there and I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish it off. I used a Ultra, or what was that? What am I using here? I used a uni thread in a six ot so that I get kind of, kind of a fatter band there. And of course, you know, we could we could spin our bodkin to the our, uh, our bobbin. We could spin our bobbin to the right or left to achieve flatter wire or more cabled wire. But like I said, we're going to put some UV over the top, and it's going to hopefully be, look very uniform. Uh, because this is our last step, we don't have to worry about finishing our thread on the top because it is the last thing we're cutting off of there. Now we can fish the fly just like that, but we can do a little bit to add some durability to it. I'm going to come in with some fully mill glass UV resin, and I'm going to just kind of haphazardly put some goopy stuff on there, right? But then I'm going to come in with my bobbin, my bobkin. Bobbin and bobbin straight. And I'm just gonna kinda make sure I hit these thread wraps up here at the top and the body down below. And uh, we could we could pull a, a trick out of Lance Egan's bag and come in here and pinch those wraps and take away some excess, give ourselves a little bit more segment uh, where we applied our wire. But I think that a smooth body actually works pretty good on this one. And then we're gonna come in and hit it with our light and give it a cure. And because we put UV on both sides of this uh, fly, we're gonna go ahead and cook it for a good while here. And there you have it. That is the Root Beer Midge. Um, I've not seen anybody tie it like this, but it's a, you know, it's so simple. It's like a holographic tinsel zebra midge. Uh, so I'm not claiming this is a pattern or anything like that. Uh, but it does fish like the Dickens. So check it out. You can tie it in copper. You can tie it in black nickel. You can tie it jig. You can tie it straight. The world's your oyster.